Good morning and welcome to the third meeting of our steering committee, which is leading the process of revising Louisiana's social studies standards. If you're able to please be seated, we'll get started. All right, this meeting is called to order. The Social Studies Steering Committee is a 26-member steering committee that oversees and coordinates the standards review process pursuant to BESI, monitors progress, ensures alignment across grade levels and subjects, and makes final recommendations to BESI. This public hearing is the third meeting of the Social Studies Standards Review Steering Committee. Please remember that this public meeting is being live streamed and recorded. This process started on December 15, 2020, when Bessie voted to review Louisiana student standards for social studies. LDOB released an application to serve on the Standards Review Committee and the content work groups on December 18, 2020. And Bessie approved the members of this committee and work groups on March 9, 2021. The first two committee meetings were held on March 27th and June 27th. At these meetings, you, the volunteer members of the steering committee, heard from volunteer speakers and from social studies experts. Today's meeting is an opportunity for this committee to decide on its final recommendations to Bessie. If there's anyone in the audience who wishes to provide public comment, we ask that you please fill out a comment card and give it to a staff member. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Please also note that all comments should be relevant to agenda items. No other comments will be received at this time, and no interaction or discussion will occur between committee members and or the public. If you take a look at our agenda, you'll see that first we'll have a brief welcome message, then we'll call the roll of the committee. After that, we will receive the minutes from the previous meeting and then we will consider the draft standards. And Dr. Brumley is coming to welcome y'all and tell y'all hello. So we're gonna wait just a minute, he's on the way. They are excited waiting for us. You can go up front when you can be on the way. Hey, good morning, everyone. I uh, just want to thank you again for your uh, continued efforts uh, on, this, on this process. As a former uh, social studies teacher, this is very important to me um, that we get this work and that we get this work done in, in, the, correct, in the correct way. Um, certainly, there are many passions uh, about this particular issue, uh, and that's what makes our country great. Uh, there are so many reasons that make our country great. Uh, and that is one of them that's on display here today. We have done our best as a team to accommodate uh, everyone's uh, ability to be able to offer public feedback today. So we have multiple rooms that are in place. Uh, and of course, we're trying to abide by uh, also the uh, mandates from the Division of Administration who oversee this particular building that require a face mask unless you have a medical condition. So a lot of work has gone into this. I thank you for that. Uh, and I look forward to uh, working with you all in the future, uh, and, and just so appreciate the work that you give the children across our great state. Thank you. Now, before we call roll, we'd like to take just a second to, again, welcome the committee members, welcome any work group members who may be in the back, as well as Bessie members or other elected officials. Thank you all for being here and participating in this process with us. And we'd like to thank the public who are watching via the live stream, and we appreciate the comments we're going to hear from you later. At this time, staff will call roll. Pat Arnold. Pat Arnold is not present. <coughs> Amanda Austin. Amanda Austin is not present. Reginald Baptiste. Reginald Baptiste is present. I'm sorry. Okay, good. Hope Bridger. I'm here. Hope Bridger is present. Belinda Cambry is here. Belinda Cambry is present. Joseph David here. Joseph David is present. Ashley Ellis. Ashley Ellis is not in attendance. Harry Greenwald here. Harry Greenwald is present. Woody Jenkins present. Woody Jenkins is present. Kayla Joseph. Kayla Joseph is not in attendance. Aaron Jura. Aaron Jura present. Aaron Jura is present. Susan Kahn. Susan Kahn is not in attendance. Samantha LaFleur, present. Samantha LaFleur is present. Julianne Lewis, present. Julianne Lewis is present. Nicole Means, Nicole Means is not in attendance. Carol Arnold Jones, 
Caroline Jones is not in attendance. Nikki Patterson. Nikki Patterson is not in attendance. Chandra Phillips. Present. Chandra Phillips is present. Marla Powell. Present. Marla Powell is present. Emily Provencher. Present. Emily Provencher is present. Eloise Pruitt. Present. Eloise Pruitt is present. Liv Walters Ronhurst. Present. Ms. Ronhurst is present. Lori Seagrin. Present. Lori Seagrin is present. Crystal Stone. Present. Crystal Stone is present. Ardella Wigman. Present. Ardella is present. Justin Winder. Present. Justin Winder is present. Daniel Williams. Present. Daniel Williams is present. Jason Willis. Present. Jason Willis is present. You have the floor. Thank you. Uh, before we proceed, I neglected to uh, sufficiently, I think, recognize our elected officials. If you would, if you're an elected official, would you please stand so we can all see who you are and, and really thank you more personally. Thank you all so much. At this time, I would ask you to consult the packet in front of you and review the minutes of the June 26th meeting of the Social Studies Steering Committee. After you've had a chance to review, I would ask that uh, I would entertain a motion to accept these minutes. some more concrete and rigorous geography and civic standards. Third through fifth grade standards now broadly cover world history. The goal was to build knowledge chronologically and systematically beginning in prehistory through the 1600 AD. The history of the United States and Louisiana are covered in tandem beginning in sixth grade and running through, US, through high school U.S. history and civics. With the exception of indigenous Louisiana history and early French exploration and colonization appearing in third, fourth, and fifth respectively. The revised high school civics course covers the development and structure of our constitutional republic and includes an in-depth study of enlightenment philosophy and political theory, the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution and the Federalist Papers. As you are aware, you were all sent an updated version of the standards on Wednesday, September 8, 2021. This slide highlights the changes included in that version. After the last steering committee meeting, the department, along with the teacher work groups, created a crosswalk between the 2011 standards and the new draft to look for unintended changes or gaps. Some of the date ranges for grades 4 through 6 were slightly shifted to better communicate the content of each grade level. The work groups renamed the inquiry standards, social studies, analysis, skills, and practices, to hopefully better communicate that these are student expectations that will be assessed and not pedagogy and or solely a set of instructional practices. Many of the changes were made in response to public comments, including the removal of the taking informed action category and numerous edits to the language of the content standards. Do any members of the committee have questions or comments about the standards for LDOE staff? Mr. Jenkins? There's one thing that uh, I have a lot of comments, but I know we're going to have some time here. But one of the things I think early on when you mentioned a founding documents, and I think the Declaration of Independence should be included among those founding documents when that first um, comes up. 
very important principles in that declaration that laid the foundation for everything else in our country. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Do any other committee members have comments or questions? Something else I'd, I'd say is that um, I noticed throughout here there's a reference to the Napoleonic Code. And when you get to law school, one of the very first things you learn is that the Napoleonic Code has absolutely nothing to do with Louisiana. The Napoleonic Code was uh, drafted in 1804. Louisiana had not been under France in many, many years at that time. At that time, And uh, it was never in effect here. Our law here is entirely Spanish. It is uh, based on Las Siete Partidas, the seven parts, which goes back to Roman law. And, um, there's just some references in here to the Napoleonic Code, and they should not be here. It's just not part of Louisiana law at all. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Something else while I have the mind. I think in, in regard to one of our most important, one of the most important features of Louisiana history, of course, is our Acadian heritage. And I think it's really important to put our Acadian heritage in perspective. And part of that is to understand that the Acadian people are Celtic in their origins. To say that, you know, Cajuns are French. It's like saying that Irish are English. They're just not the same thing. The area of, of France, current France, where the Cajun people were originally from was Celtic. And they were, and they were actually under Britain for centuries. So it, that really needs to be explained. And it, it has a lot of relevance today, because you'll find that things like the culture and the heritage of the Cajun people very similar to the Irish and Scot Scottish. You'll see them in music, for example. And the Celtic ori origins of the Cajun people, I think, is a very important to understand. Thank you. Do we have any other discussion or any questions from the committee? Well, I mean, if nobody else is going to talk about all the things <laughs> I'd like to mention. You know, I woke up very early this morning and I was really very excited about the meeting today because it, it reminded me of the tremendous opportunity we have to, as to Louisiana history in particular, acquaint a generation or two of young people with the rich heritage of this state. And we can have a recitation of facts, and that's good as long as they're true facts. But even more than that is we need to bring history alive through the stories of the real people who have lived it. Uh, our history is full of drama, it's full of uh, hardship, it's full of triumphs, and those are found through the personal stories of people. I was thinking this morning after I woke up, if I could just create a, a pictures, photos that would represent the heritage of, of this state. And some of the things I would have, I'd have a picture of Evangeline. Uh, even though she was an imaginary person, she represented uh, the people coming here in the 1700s. I'd have a picture of my Choctaw ancestors. I'd have a picture of Julian Portress, who in some case, in some ways, was one of the, the greatest of all Louisianans. And his story of being captured on the streets of Marseille and then sent off to fight the British against his will and becoming a POW, finally making his way as a small teenager, unable to speak anything but French, he came to New Orleans and became a peddler and walked up and down the Mississippi. And uh, he, he became very wealthy and ultimately bought about 12 plantations. He founded the Bank of Louisiana. He was a territorial delegate. He's the one that introduced the bill in Congress to make Louisiana a state. <coughs> And that was very contentious, you know, because in, in that particular case, uh, the rep congressman from Massachusetts uh, ridiculed the people of Louisiana, this is in, I guess, 1810, 1811, as being just monkeys and barbarians, no place to have a state. And Julian Parkins raised the question of the, of the witch trials in Salem, Massachusetts, as a counter act. But anyway, he won that vote, and Louisiana became a state. Then he became chairman of the Constitutional Convention. 
to draft our first constitution. But we don't ever hear of Julian Parkes. We hear Parkes Street too often, but there's a tremendous story of Julian Parkes. Right here in Baton Rouge, we have the West Florida Republic. You know, this, this history here in Baton Rouge, we weren't French at all. I mean, we were British. This was a British colony. And from 17, about 17, late 1760s to 1779, when we had the first Battle of Baton Rouge, which was just about a block in this direction, where the uh, Americans and Spanish here overthrew Port British Fort Richmond and ultimately raised the Bonnie Blue flag, which became the flag of the Republic of West Florida. Growing up in Louisiana, I never read about West Florida in our textbooks. It was amazing. They had their own constitution, Declaration of Independence. There's only a few people in what's now the United States who fought for their freedom. One was the original 13 colonies. One was Texas. Another was West Florida. Anybody else who was by purchase or grants? California, maybe they fought a little bit. And even in the case of Texas, people don't know it, but you know, a lot of the independence of Texas has to do with Louisiana. Jim Bowie traveled from Baton Rouge, where he was living on Opelousas, and he carried a band of fighters carrying the body blue flag of West Florida. Ultimately, that flag became the first flag of Texas, and even today is integrated in uh, to the Texas flag. So I like to ask Texans the question, who hung that star over Texas? And they don't know what I'm talking about. I said, well, Louisiana did. Jim Bowie did. He brought that flag from Louisiana. But it goes on and on. There's so many incredible things in our history. There's stories. There are pictures. And our young people need to not only have facts to recite, dates. I think they need to know the timeline. But they will remember the stories. And so we need to have a whole litany of stories that we teach our young people about the heritage and history of our state. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, Ms. Collins, I would remind uh, the committee, please lean into the microphone and speak as loudly and clearly as you can. Great. Um, good morning. I just wanted to ask, Mr. Jenkins, were you, um, just a point of clarity, were you stating that there should be introduction of the Declaration of Independence before the high school civics class? Oh, absolutely. I think very early on. And there's a reference earlier than that to founding documents, but the Declaration is not included in that. Okay. Okay. And um, actually, uh, my neighbor here, she's noticed that there is a mention of it in grade six history, and then in civics, it's mentioned for CC9. So that's what I'm, I just wanted to get clarity. Thank I think you. It's earlier, maybe, but I found it. I was surprised it wasn't there. Thank you both. Any other committee comment, or question, or discussion? You know, I'm trying to get some conversation going. So I mean, I have more things to say, but other people should talk. Yes. I was happy um, to hear from Mr. Jenkins. You have been missing a lot. Um, and like you said, the stories of history. And I think that what we start to do now with these new standards is introduce children to the story of history way earlier than they were. Um, I think multiple times in the standards talk about diverse perspectives, different people in different places. And so I think they really start to get um, an idea of the holistic picture of Louisiana and the country. And I think, to your point, throughout the standards, we talk about different types of sources, whether it's pictures, videos, multimedia, so kids can really have, we should be talking about like, we don't have to create the pictures because the pictures already exist, and so what we'll be doing is giving kids access to these multimedia sources um, in a way that we haven't before. Thank you. You know, there are different uh, sort of trends in history, and there's take a segment and look at it, <clears throat> there are different things that happen. For example, <clears throat> I had a, an extraordinary experience. I uh, served in the legislature for 28 years. And in 1992, <clears throat> the, the House and the Senate had their only meeting of the legislature in the old state capitol since 1935. It was an actual session of the legislature. Uh, and, and it was in, in the room over here in the old state capitol where Louisiana voted to secede from the Union. And it was in that same room that Huey Long 
was impeached. And I had that day an opportunity to visit with Judge Cecil Morgan. He was, uh, this was 1992. He had served in the legislature. He was the last person to serve in the legislature under Huey Long from 1928 to 1932. And he's actually the one who would introduce the impeachment resolution against Long, which of course had passed in the House. He was not convicted in the Senate. But I asked him, what's wrong with Louisiana? Why do we suffer from corruption so much? And he told about how until Huey Long, Louisiana, over the previous, say, 30 or so years, have been very honest, honest governors. But beginning with Huey Long, we've had a series of many dishonest governors, interrupted sometimes with some uh, honest governors. And it all came about because of oil money. Oil money where they, he could tax the wealthy and he could tax the oil companies, and people wouldn't pay for it. He could spread the wealth while keeping a lot of it for himself and his allies. But the influence of oil and the influence of corruption things that need to be examined. You know, the history of our river, of the Mississippi River, so much of Louisiana is tied to this river. Everything from colonization to right today with the presence of, actually, our port, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and South Louisiana, that's the largest port in America. So much is about this river. So the river needs to be examined. The weather, the history of the weather. The longer I live in this state, I realize so much of us, we're defined by our weather, especially in South Louisiana. And that's important for kids to understand. So gambling, we're now in a third wave of gambling. After the Civil War, uh, we had the Louisiana lottery, it was filled with corruption. Finally, it was Governor Murphy Foster and the legislature, which eradicated it, was so bad that the Congress had to pass a law prohibiting the use of males for lotteries, and they moved ultimately to Nicaragua. But they eradicated gambling. And then under Huey and Earl Long, we had wide open gambling in many parishes in our state. In places like Jefferson Parish, you had casinos operating in, say, 1948, 1949. They had thousands of people there. Um, Frank Sinatra would come and sing at the casinos with wide open gambling in Jefferson Parish. That was under Huey Long. But then that was eradicated by Governor Robert Kennan and Francis Grevenberg, another key person in Louisiana history, because he got rid of so much corruption as head of state police. We're now in our third wave of gambling, starting in the 1990s. But all of these things need to be explored. It's not just, you know, what the Persians did or something. It's, there's so many stories about what's actually happened to our people, some of it within living memory that's so important. So I know when I was in school, history stopped in the 1930s. I went to I graduated in 1965. We never looked at anything after 19, about 1935. So there's never even an explore, exploration of World War II. I mean, there needs to be. If we're going to talk about Vietnam, we need to understand the Soviet aggression all over the world, the fact that they and the Chinese were arming the North Vietnamese and, and invading South Vietnam. It's just not about some protest here in state. There were reasons why Americans took our policies that we did as a nation. So there's a lot to learn in social studies and it informs our decisions today. If we know the facts, if we know the past, or if we don't know the past, if we just go by the latest talking points of say the news media, then we will be led astray so much. But original sources are one of the most important sources. So things written by the individuals who made the made history, the reports contemporaneously that occurred. And then, of course, today, we get to get on the internet and we can bring so many things together. I love to do investigative reporting for our newspaper or the historical lecture because I find we can, we can put so many pieces together from different sources that were never available before. But learning to research history is something we need to teach our kids, too. Thank you. Mr. I've read through these standards several times. I just want to um, say that I like the chronicle order that it de developed here. Um, we, that was a little controversial when Chris Williams was first brought to us about which this chronicle order, but I think it worked, it's worked very well. And I think the work groups have done an excellent job of covering each period in each grade level. And I think a lot of them, and with all due respect, Mr. Jenkins, a lot of things that he's talking about has to do with the curriculum that the districts decide. But the standards have done an excellent job of covering history 
geography, economics, and civics in a chronological order that I think in the long run will benefit all of our students. So I just want to say that the work groups have done a really good job of that. Thank you. Any others? Okay, do we have any public comment? I apologize, I believe we need a motion and a second to endorse the standards before we can open up for public comment. Do I hear a motion to endorse the standards? Ms. Williams' motion, Ms. Wigman second. I'm sorry, this would be a substitute motion. Okay. Just one second. Okay. Um, Ms. Williams' motion, Ms. Wigman second. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
in the school and ultimately learning experience for the student. Um, would these be posed test questions as it relates to Louisiana history? And I think that would be my focus here. Um, the test questions when it comes to included but not limited to. Um, there was great concern that the revision prior to this was a lot better. This one seems to be a lot more generic. Um, what would the outside sources from other states or models or process that was used to implore improvement for the ranking of our state ranking at this time, or the status of our state ranking? Is there a historian on the committee? And I may have missed someone's um, background or um, the contribution to the committee. I was very concerned if there was a historian. And it also is concerning, as Mr. Jenkins alluded to, with some of the experiences here. Um, even with Madam C.J. Walker being from Delta, Louisiana, I don't know how many students. I don't see enough of that in our in our history learning as it relates to um, Louisiana history. So with that being said, it's concerning, um, some very concerning when LPB does a better job of the history of Louisiana than it seems to be of what we offer in our Louisiana history course. Thank you. statement 
use a variety of methods and technologies to communicate arguments that will engage a range of audiences, including venues outside of the classroom. Exactly how do you intend to have educators grade this? Thank you. Thank you. questions they have 
about their history and our nation's history and the world's history as well as current events. Once they leave us from middle school or go to high school and become adults, um, they'll have those skills where they can answer their questions. Um, I also like that Louisiana history will be integrated into more than just the third and eighth grade standards. Um, so for example, my son take Louisville in third grade last year, and the next time he'll be exposed to Louisiana history will be when he gets to eighth grade with our current standards. Um, so I think integrating it into where Louisiana fits within the world um, as they go through sixth through eighth grade and even in the elementary grades would be more beneficial. Um, also I think it'll help, it, it kind of provides a lot of context for what was happening within our state in a larger scale. I guess one concern that I do have is um, for the students when the seniors do take effect, my incoming sixth grade students who will be in the new standards, if they come in at fifth grade having their U.S. history from elementary, they'll miss that uh, sixth grade world history year. So that would be one concern I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
We're going to take uh, just a moment to verify that there are no more comment cards out there. We think this is it, but we just want to make sure everyone's had the opportunity. We do have one or two more that are making their way around. Good morning. My name is Ronald Stevens. I'm the president of the Louisiana Publishers Association. And I would like to show our support from the Louisiana Publishers Association, especially for social studies, because it's been a, a number of years since we've had these standards. I believe the inquiry process is, is what best suits the, the needs of the state and the educators, the learning community, and the students. So my, my main comment is that we appreciate all the efforts of all of the, the uh, stakeholders that have been participating in the steering committee and look forward to you coming and arriving at standards that are really going to help us move our students forward and our educators forward. Thank you. Thank you. This is uh, one final call for public comment. If they have a comment, please let the staff in your room know uh, as soon as no. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, that concludes our public comment. There is a motion and a second on the floor to endorse the standards as presented in Globo. Are there any objections? We have an objection from Mr. Jenkins. Yes, I have an objection. I don't comment. <coughs> First, a, a comment just on some of the general references in the materials. There's a lot of discussion about discrimination and equity and things like that. I wanted to tell you a little story about that. Here in Louisiana, we've had two groups of people who have been brought here against their will. That was the Acadians and African Americans. They're not alone in terms of immigration. One of our largest immigrant groups is the Italians, and they, of course, are subject to a lot of discrimination. New Orleans was had perhaps a majority of Italians, certainly very close to it, in the year 1900. We might check that census to see. But 300,000 people immigrated to New Orleans from Italy from about 1880 to 1920. We had the Germans, and we had the German coast. We had the British, and specifically here to the Florida parishes. Uh, we've had, uh, in, in the last uh, number of decades, we've had a numerable number of Latin Americans, in fact, New Orleans and Jefferson Parish are today the number two city of Honduras. Uh, we also have the Vietnamese who came beginning with both people escaping from Vietnam. There are very large numbers of Vietnamese here. Everybody tends to think that their group suffered the most. And uh, so there's an, there's an emphasis on that. But I want to tell you another story. And that is, I don't know if you've ever heard of a man named James Curley. James, if you Google Curley effect, you'll read an interesting political science article. James Curley was the mayor of Boston from 1913 off and on until 1951. He was Irish. And at that time, of course, the Irish had been discriminated against a lot, and they had their own sets of grievances. And James Crowley realized that he could make political hay and gain political power by emphasizing those grievances. And what James Curley did from the 19-teens to the 1950s was attack the Anglo-Saxon population, mainly those of English heritage, in Boston. He passed discriminatory taxation, and he used a lot of re rhetoric. You'd call it crazy rhetoric make a lot of people just want to leave Boston. And I, the emphasis I'm making right now is, it's not only that there has been discrimination and that there needs to be equality, but we need to also let our young people know that they can be used for political purposes by emphasizing our differences, by making everything a grievance. And some politicians have historically and will continue to use our differences as a way to get and keep political power. So we need to be with eyes open when we talk about equality, when we talk about discrimination, so that we don't allow ourselves to be used by people who simply want to get and keep political power. Thank you. We have another comment card, Mr. Wayne. Hi, I'm Wayne Collins, and I'm speaking up because I was sitting in the audience, and it was tough to follow. I didn't know who was in here, who was talking. A lot of the voices are muddled out there. I want to put a face to it and just try to understand what y'all are going through. Uh, the, the picture only shows these three people sitting up here, and it's, and it's tough to follow along and, and barely discern the issues being discussed. Uh, and and uh, I drove a long ways here early in the morning on high traffic 110, uh, I-10, and to come here and to try and struggle through this and not put a face to it, I, I'm sorely disappointed in the presentation of the way this is being done there. Uh, this is my first experience, as I've communicated with some of you before, and uh, if you're getting these issues out, I don't know how the public can understand these things when these uh, young people introduce 
you can't hear when you're not speaking directly into a microphone out there. So they don't know who it is that's speaking or if one of you out there in the audience is speaking. A lot of times it doesn't come through. Maybe you're not removing the mask or maybe the quality is not there. But we really need to do a better job if we're going to be a top-notch organization. And, and I expect more. Uh, a, a lot of questions being asked, just like these three right up here got their backs to me, just so we can be on camera and they can't see the faces of you out there and whether you're really listening to the speaker or not. You know, it's tough to put a face and a name together with all of this. So, yeah, I really think we've got to re uh, examine that. And I don't know why we're not using the room out there uh, such that the audience can see a name and a face and a label of who's speaking and who that character is and, and maybe have an additional area for all you other interested people there. Uh, I see there's a lot more people in this room than I anticipated, and, uh, and, and maybe that's good, but, uh, but uh, certainly the public is not aware of it. They cannot see all of this. Mr. Colvin, the motion is to approve the standards. Do you have a comment about the standards? Well, uh, yeah, we, we didn't, I couldn't hear the recap of what that standard is. Uh, you have any uh, printed copies of that? May I have this copy? Sure. First. You may have it. Thank you. Uh, no, I'll pause there and, and, and be glad to review it there. Um, but uh, uh, to discuss it is so much uh, so critical to all of this. So thank you for your time, and, and I hope that we can uh, interact more efficiently in the future. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I didn't really state my reason for objecting, and let me, I was telling a story. But my reason for objecting right now is that I don't think the standards are ready to be approved. I think they need more work. I'm hopeful to be able to support the standards. I would like to. But I think they need more work. I think no matter what we do, whether we approve them or not today, I think we, they will get more work. But I feel like that at this moment, since we're being asked to vote, I would rather we just pass them on. But if we have to approve them, I can't approve them at this time because I think there's still work to be done. Thank you for clarifying, Mr. Jenkins. So with that, I believe we'll proceed to a roll call vote. Is that correct? Is Mr. Jenkins the only individual opposed to the motion? Please raise your hand. Well, don't you need to call the roll? Or have I, I the vote not, it's not necessary if you're the only vote class. That's not saying you can call the roll for things. You can say all for, all against. Well, if there's only one against, is anyone else against? You call the roll either as a group, to yeas and nays, or raise your hand, or you call the roll individually. You don't say, is are you the only one against? I've never heard of that in my whole Years of parliamentary the procedure. purpose of a roll call is if there's more than one that could not be captured by the recorder, but I would be happy to do so, Mr. Mr. Jenkins. Pat Arnold. Pat Arnold is not in attendance. Amanda Austin. Amanda Austin is not in attendance. Reginald Baptiste. Yes would indicate support. No would in indicate against. Yes. Mr. Baptiste votes yes. Hope Bridger. Yes. Bridger votes yes. Belinda Camry? Yes. Belinda, Belinda Camry votes yes. Joseph Davi? Yes. Joseph Davi votes yes. Ms. Ashley Ellis is not in attendance. Aaron Greenwald? Yes. Aaron Greenwald is, votes yes. Woody Jenkins? No. Woody Jenkins votes no. Kayla Joseph? Kayla Joseph is not in attendance. Aaron Jura? Yes. Aaron Jura votes yes. Susan Kahn? Susan Kahn, not in attendance. Samantha LaFleur? Yes. Samantha LaFleur votes yes. Julianne Lewis? Yes. Julianne U. Lewis votes yes. Nicole Means? Nicole Means is not in attendance. Caroline Jones is not in attendance. Nikki Patterson? 
Vicki Patterson is not in attendance. Chandra Phillips? Yes. Chandra Phillips votes yes. Carla Powell? Yes. Carla Powell votes yes. Emily Preventure? Yes. Em Emily Preventure votes yes. Eloise Pruitt? Yes. Eloise Pruitt votes yes. Lynn Walters Reinhurst? Yes. Lynn Walters Reinhurst votes yes. Lori Seagren? Yes. Lori Seagren votes yes. Crystal Stone? Yes. Crystal Stone votes yes. Ardana Wigman? Yes. Ardana Wigman votes yes. Justin Weiner? Yes. Justin Weiner votes yes. Danielle Williams? Yes. Danielle Williams votes yes. Jason Willis? Yes. Jason Willis votes yes. Thank you very much. For our next item of business, we would like to ask for a motion and second to direct the LDOE to submit the social studies standards you just voted to endorse on behalf of the social studies steering committee to, to present those to Bessie. We have a motion, do I hear a second? Uh, second by Ms. Wickman, the motion was by Ms. LaFleur. Again, we have a motion and second on the floor to direct the LDOE to submit the social studies standards on behalf of the social studies standards steering committee to Bessie. Are there any objections? I have, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Um, I'm just curious because it was brought up, um, um, how is the transition going to be uh, implemented from the old standards to the new standards? Because it's a good question about what, what is, what's not covered from one to the next. Is that going to be a decision? I'm sure the DOE is going to give guidance on that to the district, but is that going to be a district decision on how they do that transition, uh, each district individually, or is that something that the DOE is going to implement? I'm going to turn to one of my colleagues to answer that question more fully than I do. Uh, I'll start and then share it next So um, we will be providing guidance to the DOE on how to make that transition more smooth. Of course, ultimately, all instructional materials and curriculum decisions are made by local systems, but we're here to support you in any way that you need. And we'll provide a lot of opportunity for you to learn about the big things. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, and more specifically, my team's going to be working really closely to get resources out to districts that only really talk about the learning year before they implement it, and working really closely with teachers and advisors. In addition, um, well, wonder, I know we brought up the comment that gap year, and we have those students that we have to catch up, not un unsilar to some of just science, right? Whenever we adopted the science standards, there were some kids that were caught in that interim. Any other comments or discussion from the committee? Okay, we'll now open it for public comment on this motion. So let's pause. We're going to pause to give you a chance to turn your comment card into staff if any members of the public would like to comment on the motion to direct the LDOE to officially present these standards to us.
Okay, there is no public comment. With that, is there any objection to the motion? To direct the LDOE to recommend these standards to Bessie on behalf of this committee. Hearing none, that motion carries. As a reminder, the public has an opportunity to comment on each of the standards electronically via our, pub our, public, com our public comment portal, which we open beginning October 1 through October 31st. To access the portal, please visit the Standards Review Committee page. Again, that will be open October 1 through October 31. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I have a motion by Ms. Walters Roanhorse and a second by Ms. Williams. Any opposition? On behalf of the LDOE, thank you all very much for your time and your discourse and your input. We are adjourned.